Omi Industries. And today I'm here to talk to you about the Cascading Register. The Cascading Register is a shift register-based source of pseudo-random voltages and gates. The design grew out of the first Omi Industries module, the dual digital shift register. However, it is not just a version two, but its own separate unique entity. The design philosophy takes inspiration from digital shift registers, wranglers, LFSRs, and analog shift registers. Now, if you don't know what that all means, that's okay. I'll be doing a deep dive on the theory, design, and how you might use the module. Now, even if you do know what that all means, stick around, you may learn a thing or two. So why don't you join me? A brief explanation of shift registers. A shift register has two inputs, a clock input and a data input. The cascading register is a digital shift register, so the data input only accepts two states, on or off, high or low, zero or one. On the rising edge of a clock pulse, a shift register looks at the data input and passes that state into the first stage of the shift register. So if the data input is high, it moves a high state into the first stage of the shift register, turning the first gate output on. If it's low, it moves a low state into the first stage, turning the first gate output off. Data sources available on the front of the module include the data input and the manual seed button. Additionally, on every clock pulse, whatever data was in the first stage gets shifted to the second stage. Whatever is in the second stage moves to the third stage, and so on. When a bit of information reaches the last stage, it is shifted out of the register. In addition to the external data input and the seed button, data also comes from inside the shift register. The eighth, sixth, and fifth gates are also fed back into the data stream. Each part of the data path is logically combined with a Boolean logic function called XOR. XOR logic takes two elements and compares them, turning the output high if one or the other inputs are high, and low if both or neither are. Put another way, the output is high if the inputs don't match, and low if the inputs do match. On screen, you can see the order of the data stream and which parts are XORed with each other. You may think that the seed button will always move a high state into the first stage of the shift register, but since it's XORed with the other data sources, it may move a high or low state into the first stage. Either way, it's still moving new information into the data stream. The technique of using the internal data of the shift register comes from linear feedback shift registers, known as LFSRs. An LFSR is a simple way to generate pseudo-random numbers in code. As you don't have access to the thermal noise used in analog hardware to generate noise and randomness. An LFSR takes two or more of the stages of the shift register and logically combines them, typically with XOR logic, and passes that to the data input. The selection of which stages are fed back into the data input determines the length of the pseudo-random pattern. The configuration of stages that makes the longest pattern is called a maximal length shift register. The cascading register is not a maximal length shift register, which in an 8-bit shift register would include the fourth stage in addition to the fifth, sixth, and eighth. You could easily create a maximal length shift register by patching the fourth bit back into the external data input. The cascading register has three CV outputs derived from the state of the bits in the shift register using simple digital to analog converters. CV1 comes from stages 0 through 3, CV2 comes from 2 to 5, and CV3 comes from 4 to 7. You'll notice each of the groups is offset by two stages, creating three patterns derived from the same data but shifted by two clock pulses. This brings us to the last shift register inspiration on the cascading register, an analog shift register. An analog shift register is essentially a series of cascaded sample and holds. A sample and hold, much like a shift register, has a clock input and a data input, usually called the sample input. Instead of looking for an on or off signal, it basically takes a snapshot of the level of the voltage present at the sample input and sends that to the output. That signal level is held until it receives another clock pulse, and then it samples again. 
An analog shift register includes a series of sample and holds, so on each clock pulse, the sampled voltage is passed from one sample and hold to the next. So while the cascading register doesn't actually include sample and holds, the core idea of moving a stream of stepped voltages through a set of outputs remains. These three white knobs control the level of the three CV outputs. CV1 and 2 include attenuators, while CV3 has an attenuator. An attenuator goes from off when turned all the way counterclockwise to all the way on when turned fully clockwise. An attenuator is off in the center, turning clockwise increases the voltage positively, while turning counterclockwise inverts and increases the voltage negatively. If you turn the CV3 knob up and are using the internal clock, you may notice the speed of the clock varies, speeding up and slowing down. That's because CV3 is normalized to the CV input on the internal clock. The clock is a simple voltage-controlled square wave LFO, normalized to the clock input of the shift register. Normalized means that when no cable is inserted into that jack, an internal signal is routed to that input. Inserting a cable breaks this normalization and allows for external signals to be used. If you decide to use an external clock signal, you still have the internal clock available to use elsewhere in your system. One thing I particularly like doing is clocking the cascading register from a clock divider and using the internal clock as a data source. The cascading register accepts clock signals from sub-audio to audio all the way up to video rates so be sure to experiment with a wide range of input signals. We'll be going over video uses for the cascading register in a future video. The cascading register expects a square wave, gate, or trigger to clock it with a hard rise and fall time, and signals without a hard edge, such as a triangle or sign, may cause the data to move erratically, the results of which may be useful depending on how you plan on using the module. Now that we've gone over the basics of the theory behind the module, we can explore a bit of how you might actually use it. When you first power up the module, often all the blue LEDs will be on or off. Like all of us, sometimes the cascading register needs a little outside help to really get going. Now the easiest way to get the module going is simply touch the seed button. This adds new data into the stream the module uses to generate the pseudorandom patterns. As I bring up CV3, you can begin to see the clock start to move erratically. Now another way to move new data into the register is to input a signal into the data input, such as this gate signal from function. You can also clock the cascading register from an external clock source. One thing you'll often see me do in these videos is use the internal clock as a data source. This way, you only need one clock source or one data source to generate the pseudo-random patterns. Here I have a basic patch set up. I patched the three CV outputs to the pitch inputs on three oscillators, and now I'm going to bring them in one at a time. So it's subtle, but you can begin to hear a bit of a delayed sequence shifted in each of the oscillators. Let's add some of the gate outputs from the cascading register. I'm patching the first gate output into a kick and the fourth into a snare, creating a simple rhythm. Outputs are traditionally used as timing signals, they're also a great source of modulation. Here I'm using gate outputs to modulate the wave shape and fold on the BIA and the resonance on the QPOS the other two oscillators pass into.
original patching and video use for the cascading register. So until next time, I'm Naomi from Omi Industries and I wish you happy patching.